A new review from the prestigious Cochrane Reviews suggests that lowering saturated fat will reduce your risk of cardiovascular events. So what does this mean for you? I'm Dr. Brett Schur, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, and I just wrote a post on this article, which you can find at dietdoctor.com. But I want to explain a little bit about it here because the action step from the headlines is fairly clear. It says you should reduce your saturated fat because this um, system, systematic review of randomized controlled trials shows that lower saturated fat intake is associated with a reduced risk of cardiovascular events. But it's a little more complicated than that. And I think that's what one of the things that I enjoy most about reading studies is trying to help people understand how does this apply to you? Because just because a headline says something doesn't mean it necessarily applies to everyone. So let's unpack this a little bit. So first, it's a systematic review of randomized controlled trials, which is the highest level rated evidence um, based on our diet doctor uh, evidence basing, right? So I didn't say that well, but you get the point. Like This is the, the highest level. It's not the lower quality nutritional epidemiological studies. It's not a single randomized controlled trial. It's a it's a uh, combination of a number of different randomized controlled trials. So specifically, they looked at 12 different randomized controlled trials, combined the data together, and showed that there was a small reduction in cardiovascular events for those who lowered their saturated fat intake. Now, there was no difference in cardiovascular deaths. There was no difference in all-cause death, who lived or who dies. Um, but there was a small reduction in heart attacks and strokes. Now, what's interesting, of those 12 studies, nine of them were negative. Nine showed no difference whatsoever. Three did show the small difference, and when you combine them all together, so that's sort of the purpose of these systematic reviews, that when a, uh, when a, a benefit or a risk is so small that a single trial is not going to pick it up, you have to combine all these trials, and that's what happened here. But interestingly, these trials were from 1966 to 2004. So there have been no trials since 2004 included um, in this, I'm sorry, 2006 were included in this review. And the other thing is, um, we don't know where saturated fat came from in these diets. And that's a problem with a lot of nutritional studies. Fat saturated fat, protein, carbohydrates, as if they're all the same and they're clearly not the same. So uh, one of my wishes is that we talked more about food. So when, you know, there's studies looking at red meat specifically, and we've published on this as well at Diet Doctor, that there's no high quality evidence to suggest you should limit your intake of red meat. Well, what about saturated fat? Does that mean red meat? Does that mean dairy? Or does that mean cookies and cakes and baked goods that are a combination of saturated fat and trans fats and sugars? So now trans fats are much less common. But back in 1966, when these studies were, and even to 2006, when they were the, the most recent of these studies, trans fat were much more common. So um, there's certainly a, a potential, we don't know this in the studies because the evidence wasn't there, but there's a potential that it was sort of a combination of saturated fat, sugars, and trans fat. And I really wish these studies would help us with that. The other thing is all these diets were a high carb, high fat diet. So really what the conclusion shows is that if you're eating a high carb diet, then eating a lower amount of saturated fat may be beneficial at reducing your cardiovascular risk. Does this apply for people who are eating a predominantly whole foods, low carb diet? Again, we don't know. And that's part of the frustration. So my job as a clinician is, is taking care of the patient in front of me and saying, well, does this study apply to you? Our job at Diet Doctor is saying, well, yeah, here's the headline, but what what is beyond, behind the study and how do you know if maybe this study applies to you or not? And unfortunately, that's sort of the nuance that isn't always picked up in the headlines, but that's what makes this so interesting and so complicated because I want to know, does this mean that everybody should reduce their saturated fat intake? No, it doesn't. Does this mean that some people should? Probably, yeah. If you're eating a high-carb diet and you're eating... Um, saturated fats that are combined with with uh, sugars and maybe with trans fats, then yeah, probably reducing that's going to be beneficial to you to some degree. So so it's um, it's trying to understand um, what's behind the study without just throwing out the study and saying, oh, you know, don't pay any attention to this because you didn't control everything. Well, you can't. You know, nutritional science, any science is hard. You can't control for everything. But what you can do is try and interpret the conclusions in ways that make sense to you. So 
hopefully this this helped a little bit to help you determine um, if this applies to you or not. You can read more about it at dietdoctor.com uh, with links to the study and links to some of our, our other, whether it's our guide on saturated fat or some of the other stories we've written about saturated fat to sort of balance out the information. Um, and make sure you click subscribe down below so you'll get more updates like this in our pad- podcasts and our uh, cooking videos and all our inspirational videos. All right, so take care, everybody. Be happy, be healthy. Thanks for watching.